In the world of entrepreneurship, there lies an extremely successful young entrepreneur that sprung onto the UK scene just a few years ago and has exploded into the fame light. But this success has not come without its hardships, challenges, and accusations. This is not just another rags to riches saga. This is the untold truth of Stephen Bartlett, one of the UK's most successful entrepreneurs. My name's Hayden Davidson, and you're watching The Real Story. Born on the 26th of August 1992, Stephen Bartlett was born in Botswana. His mother was Nigerian, and his father, English. At the tender age of two, however, he did relocate to Plymouth with his parents, and his mother was extremely entrepreneurial herself. She actually used to spend nights sleeping inside her shop whilst pursuing her entrepreneurial endeavours. And we do wonder if that's where Stephen got his entrepreneurial endeavours from. His father was an English teacher and he lived, from what all accounts suggests, a pretty average normal life. I'm not sure if it was the awe of his mother that, by the way, never seemed to actually achieve the success that she wanted, in, in the words of Stephen, that is. I'm not sure if that's what sparked him or if it was the fact that he lived up in a, in a boarded up house. It seemed to be a fairly insignificant existence from his expectations that made him want to pursue such high heights of success. But something did. Whether it was a mix of his mother, his upbringing, the area he lived at, or the fact that his parents were not financially sound. But Stephen knew that he needed more. He knew that he wanted to achieve more and he knew that he could achieve more. He had an unwavering belief in himself. At just 18 years old, Stephen realised he was destined for more and he took the leap. He left his parents' house in Plymouth and he set sail. He set sail to Manchester where he tried to set up a new life for himself. This is where Stephen's journey truly began. By all accounts, from what we hear from Stephen on the various podcast interviews that he's done himself, as well as having his own podcast, which we will cover later on, he actually shoplifted Chicago Town pizzas. <laughs> and he used to steal money off the, the bus. When I say steal, people used to drop money on the bus, and Stephen used to take that for himself in order to feed himself, in order to live, in order to just get by, because he literally had nothing when he first arrived. Eventually, though, Stephen did find his feet, and in the end, he managed to get a job in call centres. One was Swinton Insurance, as far as we're aware. These jobs didn't fulfil him, and in Stephen's words, he hated doing it. He hated working in jobs that brought him no fulfilment, no fame, like he's got now, and ultimately not working towards the success that he wanted. Stephen was actually at university at this time as well and he decided to drop out. He decided to drop out after doing just one lecture and the reason for that was in his words he looked around and realised that everyone was going to come out of that university degree in a few years time with the same bit of paper and that bit of paper would mean the same to all of the employees. Therefore his fear and his realisation was the biggest risk that he could take in that specific scenario in his words, was to stay in that scenario. He set off again, and he set off to actually start his own business. And that business was called Social Chain. And yes, Stephen did have his first kind of business before that, called Wall Park, which was a similar ideation to Social Chain. Park was never the serious business. Social Chain was the first serious endeavour that Stephen embarked on. And he embarked on it with another man called Dominic McGregor, who is actually, to this day, Stephen Bartlett's best friend. The goal of this company was to revolutionise the ways brands connected with their audience and Stephen goes on to work with brands such as Apple and Dell and Microsoft and Amazon and things like that. We'll talk about that later on. Stephen ultimately noticed a gap in the market. He thought that he could do it better with once again that unwavering self-belief and confidence that we keep seeing coming up in all the situations in Stephen Bartlett's life. He thought he could do better and he was right once again because he decided that he was right. So Stephen persisted through the many challenges and hardships that most people get in a new business startup, including a significant challenge where they had a security breach into their emails where Dominic was pretended to be emailing his clients. A security breach actually left the company in a very dire situation. They lost about 80% of their clients on that dreaded day. 
the security breach actually meant that some of the clients were getting emailed stuff supposedly from Dominic, but it wasn't actually Dominic. It was some fraudster, some scammer trying to actually make them look really, really bad. And it did work, you know, and as I say, they got let off 80% of their clients. They lost that day. And Stephen was left in a situation where him and Dominic had to rebuild that company, not even knowing how they were going to make payroll. But eventually they got past this and actually the company grew back stronger. And eventually Stephen became even more successful as a consequence of this big challenge that came towards social chain. And look, in time, Stephen started to soar to new heights. He eventually got into his stride and the company they just kept growing and growing and growing and they ended up working as I say with brands like Amazon and Apple and things like that and just revolutionizing the way and getting great results for all of them brands they work with. In 2017 Stephen Bartlett started the Diary of a CEO podcast which is now a very known podcast here in the UK and actually worldwide but he started it in 2017 and the agenda in which he started on was very different to where we are now with the podcast when he started the podcast it was him as the CEO of Social Chain a leading global communications marketing platform for all of these big brands I so mentioned this dwarfed into something that was no longer that but the actual premise of where Stephen started was documenting his journey, documenting the raw, honest truths about his journey. You can still hear them if you go back to the oldest played videos. However, shortly after, Stephen actually decided to resign from social chain, and this is where it starts to get really interesting. A social media entrepreneur that was destined for the heights of greatness just suddenly resigned. And this is where, as I say, it gets fairly, fairly interesting. He decided to focus his efforts on the diary of a CEO, along with other projects, such as his web-free web projects, which we will talk about soon. The podcast ended up going on to be a groundbreaking podcast. Week after week, Stephen would, and still is, captivating audiences with his groundbreaking guests, groundbreaking questions, and his groundbreaking attention to every small detail. By 2021, Diary of a CEO became the Europe's most downloaded podcast, featuring luminaries from the world of business, entertainment, and beyond. At the same time, Stephen started a few more companies. One was called Web Free, the other was called Flight Story, and the other was called Flight Fund, which was a private equity fund for his investments. However, this level of fame and vast, vast growth to success did not come without its accusations. One of the first accusations was around social chain and its actual valuation. So there was a post here from Prolific North. Okay, this is the report. I'm going to read it out. Social media commentators were questioning the economics of how a company allegedly valued at close to 600 million just a couple of years ago had been sold for just 7.7 .7 million. An argument Stephen Bartlett appeared to have dismissed with a lengthy online explanation of the corporate structure and business model of parent group Social Chain. The rumours just won't go away, however. In a lengthy piece today, the Times report, as Bartlett has already admitted, that he was no longer involved as social chain AG when he achieved its multi-million pound valuation. So, when the company achieved its multi-million pound valuation, Stephen was actually no part of it. Prolific North would go on to explain that there seems to be a lot of smoke and mirrors around the actual real worth and real credentials of this Dragon. Accusations didn't stop there, unfortunately, and as the podcast Diary of a CEO grew to its huge fame, which it is now, and also accused of a few things, just apparently bringing on polarizing guests just for views, and actually all of them contradicting each other, and doing it just for views, just for the sponsorship, and just for the ad sense that they're getting from this. People still to this day have got an issue with some of the guests constantly contradicting themselves in the diary of a CEO. It seems that everything on the show is hypernized just for views. Another major criticism of the diary of a CEO podcast was that Stephen has been outright lying. 
there's a pretty famous uh, podcaster called Rob Moore, who actually, I'll, I'll insert the clip here, who actually explained that Stephen is paying £25,000 for a lot of these guests just for an appearance, when Stephen Lee has outrightly denied anything of the such and never ever admitted to the fact that he's been paying guests. Now, there's nothing wrong with paying guests if you admit it, but lying about paying guests seems to be where the issue people are having. Um, and then now, you know, ever since... Bartler, a lot of them want a lot of money now because it's you know he doesn't admit it, but he's chucking a load of money at him. Of course. Um, so a lot of them want. Money. And by the way, I know this for a fact. Yeah. So I, I like I, I probably shouldn't say this. I probably get myself in trouble. But I like I, I like the truth. And why would you get in trouble for that? Because um, Bartler has openly said he has never paid for anyone to be. Oh, they're office. all bullshit. Though. Everyone knows. They, there's only yeah. Well, I've bullshit. tried to get people on who've char who've quoted the fee that he, that charged, he yeah. paid. Yeah, they fuck it up for so, everyone else. <laughs> Yeah. They actually fuck it up for everyone else. I just raspberried on, an, on yeah. a live podcast. That's quite immature, isn't that it? That is. <laughs> but, no, but, like, it's... stop bullshitting. Yeah. I know this for a fact. Calling them out. I know, I know this for spade a fact. Is a spade. Got, yeah, spade is a spade. In 2021, Stephen would then go on now to become the, the, the UK's youngest ever dragon on the BBC show Dragon's Den. He was just 28 years old at this time. To this day, Stephen has invested in more than 40 companies, including Zoe, Huel, Perfect Head, and many more. To this day, Stephen makes most of his money from his active businesses, from his investments, and of course, from the Diary of a CEO podcasts, where he gets his sponsorship endorsements, his AdSense, and any of the products that he sells through his channels. Stephen quoted himself that he faces on a daily basis many obstacles and rejections, but they only inspire him to push further and to keep going towards changing the world in the way that he wants. To the humble beginnings in Plymouth, to the global stages of hugely successful entrepreneurship, Stephen really truly has been a beacon of what you can achieve if you really have that deep self-belief and you're willing to work hard. And of course it does make sense to get at least some level of criticism about dishonesty when you reach a certain level of success and people questioning your success in many ways. What Stephen has achieved in an extremely short period of time, which usually takes a lifetime, is obviously going to get questioned. But did Stephen get there being 100% honest and genuine and sticking to all of his morals along the way? Who knows? That's for you to decide. My name's Hayden. Thanks for watching.